Hello guys, this is Karthik from exilautomation.com and welcome to part 2 of our understanding mock video series. And in this part, we're going to write our simple mock testing. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 1 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Writing simple mock. Before writing in simple mock, we need to understand some of its patterns. These patterns are pretty common in most of the mocking framework. The pattern is arrange, which is nothing but creating a mock object, act to test the application under test, and assert, which is nothing but verify the expected result. So these are the most simple pattern need to be followed while using the mock. As I already said, arrange is for creating a mock object for the application under test. So whichever application we're going to test, we need to first arrange a mock object for testing it. And then we need to act on the application under test, which is nothing but execute the code. And then we need to assert the application under test to verify if it works fine or not. So this is a very simple pattern to be followed while writing mock. So let's start writing our simple mock code. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is my employee application project, which I have already created. And here you can see that I have a service. So we are going to talk about service in this particular video series. We're going to talk about PF service and other service, which I'm going to develop in upcoming videos of other video series but in this video series we can talk about only this application the employee application so here you can see that i have written a very super simple application and it has a entity folder and a model folder so basically this is a console based application so nothing to panic about what kind of application it is how it is being developed because this video is not just targeted for developer but this is also targeted for tester so that's why I have created this application as simple as possible. So here we have a entity folder and in this entity folder, you can see that I have some classes and this class is basically a collection of data. And you can see that the employee entity.cs class has got some data in it. And there is a employee.cs where it defines that particular entity class. That's it. And the model folder has some other classes where it shows some of the functionalities like employee benefits and employee details. So what are the details of the employee? So you can get a lot of details from this particular employee detail class. And you can see there is a employee personal detail class. It has some other functionality to perform some of the operation, get the personal details of an employee and employee PF details where you can get the providential fund detail of an employee. And it has an abstract interface as well. So using this particular interfaces, you can get access to these concrete classes. So I'm saying this as a concrete class because they have the implementation and the interface just has the definitions, right? So this is a very super simple application. And here I have written some code for running this application and you can see that i can get some of the details of an employee if i run this so you can see that it brings me up some of the details like the year and bonus for employee karthik is 4500 and the duration worked by the employee karthik is 24 and the contribution for the employee is 3456 and the benefits of the employee with a grade one or hospital gym and dental Similarly, for each and every employee, you can see what are the benefits they have and what is their PF and the contribution, etc. If I change the employee ID to four, and if I run this, you can see that based on the employee type, the information changes. So basically, these employees' informations are actually coming from our employee entities, right from here, and the benefits are actually coming from the benefit entity.cs. Right? So this is a very, very super simple application. And this is the application which we will be using for this video series as well as the upcoming video series. Alright. 
So let's not much confuse about this application. So I'm going to just close that and I'm going to add a reference for a mock in this project or to not reduce the confusion, I'm going to create a new project and let's call that as employee test. And I'm going to select this unit testing and I'm going to hit OK. So instead of this particular Visual Studio's uh, testing uh, tool dot unit testing, I'm not going to use this one. Rather, I'm going to use EN unit. So for that, I'm going to quickly open the package manager console and I'm going to select this employee test project and then I'm going to install the N unit. So this will install a N unit package for me. All right, it has been added. And also I need to install mock. So mock can be installed by downloading a package from GitHub. You can do that. You can just go ahead and download the project from here and then you can add as a reference or you can download it from the NuGet as I did for the end unit. So again, I'm just going to install the package for mock. So you can just type install package mvoq. So this will add the mock dependencies for your project. So now you can see that you your project will have a reference for the mock and the end unit framework. So I'm just going to quickly delete this particular library and I'm going to change this to test fixture. So this is going to be my end unit library and I'm going to use test method so that I can use the end units test method. That's it. And I'm using ReSharper for running the test. So you can also use ReSharp or you can use the test explorer to see the kind of test it is. So you can just run the application and you can see there is a test method one. Or you can use ReSharper right here and go to the unit test and run unit test. If you run this, this will bring you up this particular window. So before starting to write our simple mock code, I'm going to first write a non mock code and show you what is the difference between a simple mock code and a non mock code and how to use the concrete class versus the non concrete class, which is nothing but the interfaces. So, for that, I'm going to write a very simple code here for our application under test itself. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very, very simple code, something like this. So, I'm going to test the PF details of my application. So for that, I'm going to just create new. And before starting to write the code, I need to first add a reference for this employee application. So let me add a reference for this employee application in my solution. And then let's start writing it. And now you can see that I can add the application which I'm going to test. And I'm going to test the employee PF details. So I'm going to just do that. And here you can see that this particular class constructor is asking me to pass the I employee personal detail interface. And if you go to the application and if you go to the model and if you go to the I employee personal details dot CS this interface is being implemented by this particular class employee personal details.cs so instead of the concrete class we can use the interface as well but since we are going to use the poco kind of code we're going to use the real concrete class here so i'm just going to pass the new employee personal details in the constructor so this is still legal and then let's say this is nothing but your arrange operation and then you need to do a act operation which is nothing but you're going to test some of its method so let's say i'm going to test the applications um, let's say the employer's contribution or something like that so for that i'm going to just select the method 
of the PF details dot get employer contribution so far. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to pass the value. So if you see this particular method, it expects me to pass the employee ID and I'm just going to select the employee ID as one. And then I need to test or assert and see if the value which is returned from this particular method is as expected or not. So for that, I'm going to do assert dot that and then I'm going to pass the contrib and I'm going to use is dot equal to and I know what is the value of this particular employee uh, the contribution is going to be. So I'm just going to pass three, four, five, six. And if it is not equal, then I'm going to say it's not as expected. And you can quickly check what is the implementation of this particular get PF detail. You can see that this get PF employer contribution so far uh, is actually checking for the employer's duration and his salary. We're getting the total durations and salary and then we are multiplying that with 30 by 10 for the basic salary, just an assumption. And also we are contributing, we are taking 12% of the basic salary as a contribution of the employer. And then we are multiplying the total duration with the contribution to get the total employer contribution so far. So this is a pretty plain and simple method. So this way, this operation is going to return me some of the expected value. So let's quickly run and see if it works. So I'm going to use the resharper here in my case, and you can see the test method got passed. So if I change this 3456 through to maybe 3455, and then if I try to run this, you can see that the test method will fail. And it will say that it's not as expected. Expected is 3455, but the actual was 3456. So this is a very plain and simple POCO kind of code where you are directly using the actual implementation of your application under test. But in the real scenario where the developers will not use the real implementation, just nothing but the concrete implementation, rather they use the interfaces for doing so. And that's where the mock comes in. So we'll talk about the same code to be modified a little bit, and we'll start using a mock frameworks operation to perform the same kind of operation in a different way. All right, thank you very much for watching this video, guys, and have a great day.